we, as people in the sixth and seventh generation from the massacre of Wounded Knee, want our, our nations reunited. We are bringing back together the, the Sioux nation that was split apart. And that you see today. And you've seen 200 and some, almost 300 riders ride in today. You've seen representatives from every Sioux nation as well as most of the nations across the world. So we are rebuilding in the seventh generation. And for the past uh, 100 years, as individuals, and as a nation, we have been uh, spiritually crippled. Because after the massacre at Wona Knee, our uh, ancestors have never gone through the process, the ritual that is usually accorded to the family, the individual, the family, or the people who would lose a loved one. And until the time that takes place, they're in a peri uh, period of mourning. So my brothers and I, we got together and decided that we must do this spiritual ceremony of wiping the tears. the events that happened and that led up to 1890 and the subsequent actions against our people was horrendous. A heinous crime was committed. People scattered in all directions. The United States gave Congressional Medal of Honors for killing <coughs> women and children and unarmed men. Our nation just couldn't pull itself out of out of that state that they were in after that tragic event. We will go through that process of wiping the tears of our people. This doesn't mean that we forget what happened 100 years ago. But we as educators, we will rewrite history the way we've been told orally by our grandparents. The ceremony, after it's concluded, would be mean like turning a page over in history. Turning back the pages of history a thousand years, our Lakota ancestors roamed the hunting grounds that reached from what is now Canada to the Rocky Mountains and from the Platte to the Yellowstone River. In the old days of our people, life was in harmony with nature. Everything in the Great Spirit's creation was considered sacred, including every animal, every plant, and even the rocks. Afraid of Montana, little bighorn, battlefield, I 
With the landing of the Europeans in North America in the 15th century, life for our ancestors changed forever. The most important change came with the arrival of the horse, which allowed the Lakota to become masters of the Great Plains. French immigrants began arriving in our sacred hunting grounds in the early 1800s. When the settlers encountered the Lakota, they called them Sioux, a mistranslation of the old Ojibwe word for enemy, Nadia Wasu. The first confrontations with the Europeans reveal their assumption of manifest destiny, a righteous and violent vision of movement westward across a land they believe was theirs for the taking. Led by great warriors like Crazy Horse and Red Horse, our Lakota ancestors bravely defended their homeland and what we call the sacred hoop, our Indian way of life. Out of support for the white settlers and for the official government expansionist policies, the United States Army began a methodical and a systematic campaign to use whatever means necessary to seize our sacred lands. In a telegram from General William Sherman to President Ulysses S. Grant, this policy was tragically outlined. First, clear off the buffalo then clear off the Indian. We must act with vindictive earnestness against the Sioux, even to their total extermination, men, women, and children. Originally there were over five million Native Americans. The Sioux believe originally there were well over 15 million Native Americans. But if you start with the assumption of just five to seven million Native Americans that were then decimated for the next 20 generations, that 50 million were killed by war, starvation, and European disease. 50 million is a number that is comparable only to the total number of military fatalities suffered by both sides in both World Wars I and II combined. Never before in the whole of human history was the near extermination of a race so total and complete as it was in the United States. After more than 20 years of making war on our Lakota people for the rights of our sacred hunting grounds, the United States government finally proposed a peace treaty in which they promised to leave Lakota lands alone. In 1868, the Great Sioux Nation was created when certain Lakota leaders signed the Fort Laramie Treaty with representatives of the United States government. 